Hello boys and girls, Lorenzo here, and today I'll be doing something else different than a mission a day or a lesson of space. One of my friends has asked me to do a video sort of like, I'm an idiot and I want to launch a rocket in Kerbal Space Program, how do I do this? So consider this a somewhat introductory tutorial guide Kerbal Space Program for idiots sort of for idiots sort of thing. So this is the, the screen you get after starting up the game. Obviously you want to click start game and then you are presented with this menu to resume and save to start a new mission, do some training or scenarios. We're going, just going to start a new game. Now in this latest version it will make you choose between sandbox and career. For idiots. For idiots. For idiots. There we go. So in career you are limited in the parts you can use and in sandbox you have everything at once. We're just going to go for sandbox now and see how that goes. Incidentally in sandbox you can be a little bit overwhelmed by all the parts that are available. And before going on I'm just going to... this is not relevant. You can be a little bit overwhelmed by all the parts that are available. If this happens to you, take career mode instead. Don't worry about the career aspects of it. Just play around with the starting parts. So Here we have the space center. We have a few buildings here. The launch site, the v uh, vehicle assembly building, the tracking station, the R&D building, the astronaut complex, the space plane hangar and the runway. None of this matters as of now. We're just going to go into the vehicle assembly building. This is the building you want to focus on first. So we click to enter it and this is where we make our rockets. Here in the center we are going to build our rocket obviously. In the left we have a panel here with the parts. We have some tabs here. We have pods, propulsion, control, structural, aerodynamic, utility and science. This is where we grab the different building blocks of our vessel and we assemble it in here. Now for a basic rocket, just to do something, just to launch something to see how the game works, you need three things basically. You need a pod, something to control the spacecraft from. You need some propulsion, something that will make you go up. And you need a way to come back down again. Now, here we have a massive assortment of pods, manned, unmanned, airplanes, spacecraft, whatever. We are going to go with this one, the Command Pod Mark 1. It's the most basic, simple pod. And if we read the description here, it has a nice little bit of text and it says minimum crew to operate one and it has SAS equipped reaction wheels. This means that the pod itself can affect some torque on the craft so this will serve as our means of controlling the craft. In the case of larger vessels or unmanned ones you might need additional control, uh, control surfaces, control components but now the pod will do so. The next step is looking at our propulsion. If we go here we have an assortment of rocket engines and fuel tanks. Now we have a lot of engines. None of these are particularly appropriate to start out with go to the next page we see a lot of fuel tanks different kinds of fuels and different sizes of the tanks but basically they are all the same they are all fuel tanks so what we need to keep in mind when looking at all this uh, all this fuel is that we have basically two different kind of rockets we have the solid fuel rockets this is an example of a solid fuel booster and what you need to keep in mind about this, this is one part it contains the fuel and the engine and that will just make it go. They are the simplest of rockets and they are a lot like fireworks. Once you light them they are going to go up or sideways depends on how you steer. They're going to go and you cannot put them out until the fuel runs out. So that is fairly simple. We're going to put one of these on our rocket now. In contrast the liquid fuel engines they are a little bit more complicated for instance if we take this engine here you can see it is just an engine and just an engine is not going to do anything so for the liquid fuel engines you need the fuel tanks for example you grab a fuel tank and then you can put an engine on that but we're not going to do that uh, it allows for a little bit more flexibility there's fuel ducts that can transfer fuel from one tank to the other to enable crazy efficient or strange designs but for now we are going to stick with the solid fuel booster. Easy, one part and uncomplicated. So now we have the thrust, we have the means to control the rocket. All we need is a way to come back down again. So if we look at utility, we get a lot of things like solar panels, batteries, um, xenon containers for ion drives. None of that matters as of now. We just want to grab the parachute. 
again if you find this overview of uh, hundreds of parts overwhelming so up for career mode first you get like five or ten parts to start out with and you gradually unlock the whole assortment of parts for now we're going to put the parachute we're going to put that on top now this is a rocket in its simplest shape or form it's ready to fly with one small thing that needs doing first uh, obviously we don't want to uh, activate all these things at once first we want to activate the rocket and then when it burns out and we uh, descend back to earth we want to activate the parachute this is where the staging menu comes in this is here on the right and now everything is in one stage so if we were to fire it would fire the parachute and the rocket at the same time not a great idea so we're going to add a stage by clicking the plus button now we're going to drag the rocket and we can see here the icons they represent a rocket or a parachute but also if you mouse over them you can see the actual part highlighted in the vehicle assembly building here. So we're going to drag the rocket down here into the first stage. The one on the bottom is the one to fire first and then the next stage is going to be the parachute. The capsule is in there because it is the first part. It doesn't actually do anything upon activation. So we have a two-stage activation system. First we launch the rocket and then when we choose we launch the parachute. Now all that's left is to give this craft a name so we call it the idiot one. And you can give it a description here this will go up great now we save the rocket and we go to the launch pad here click the green button to launch the rocket upon launching the rocket we of course have to wonder how are we going to control it the controls are after a fashion fairly simple Look at this nav ball here on the bottom of the screen it has a few indicators here on the right it has the g-force indicator this shows you how much g's your Kerbal, he's waving at us now, is experiencing. On the left here we have the throttle, uh, the throttle, yeah, we've got the throttle, and by pressing shift we can increase the throttle, and by pressing control we can decrease it. Note that for solid rocket boosters like this one, there is no throttle, it always fires at maximum thrust, so the throttle setting only works on liquid engine, and as such we're going to leave it at 0%. We have a marker that shows us our speed relative to the surface, and by clicking it we can change that into orbital mode, this is our speed relative to the center of the planet, and it's not zero because we are on the surface of the planet and it's rotating, so we do have speed relative to the center of the planet, so we're going to put that back to surface, which is what is more appropriate now. Now on the left here we can see our staging bar, and we can activate that by pressing the space bar. Then when we do that we can control the rocket by WASD keys. They control the pitch and the yaw and the Q and E keys that control the roll. So we're going to go ahead and launch it now and see how that goes. So I did that by pressing space and we can see here on the left the fuel bar is slowly running out or rapidly running out. Alternatively you can go up to the top right of the screen and click the resources view this is an overview of all the resources on your spacecraft and we can try and steer it we can steer left a little bit and aerodynamic forces and rocket thrust will influence how exactly we can steer it so we're getting fairly quickly now because the rocket is running out of fuel becomes very light so near the end of its trajectory the accelerations become fairly great. So we reach an altitude of about 10-11 kilometers with this simple rocket. Not quite space yet, but enough to have launched something and at least fiddle around with the controls. One thing to keep in mind is that it's very difficult with these kind of rockets to see in the flight scene which, uh, which part of the rocket is forward, which part is left, which part is right, because they are of course fairly symmetrical. Now this can make it hard to control a rocket purely by looking at it and hitting the buttons and this is where the nav ball comes in. You want to look at this nav ball, the orange marker here, that straight line with the dot and the kink in it, that is the orientation of the spacecraft, that's where the nose is pointing. And the WASD keys are always relative to this marker here, so if I press A it's going to go left on the nav ball. And the ball of course represents the angles relative to the north pole, and the blue bit is pointing skywards and the gray, the brown bit is pointing groundwards. This yellow icon here is our prograde vector. This is uh, the direction in which the ship is actually heading. So if we point it now, we have the nose in the direction that we're traveling, which is straight down. And on the other side of the nav ball, we find the retrograde indicator. 
which is of course the direction the ship is not traveling in. So now we are pointing with the nose in the uh, basically facing aft. Now we're getting close to the ground now, so it is about time to trigger our second stage and deploy our parachute. We can do that now and we see that happens when we get close to the ground at about 700 meters it will deploy and it will gently drop us back to the surface. So that is basically what you have to do to launch a rocket in this game. There are a few other considerations which I will show you a few of now. Obviously this rocket is not quite big enough to get us into space. Uh, so our next step might be to return to the vehicle assembly building and add rockets to it so that it will go higher. So I'm going to do that now and show you one more very important tool to use uh, in constructing your rockets. So say we have this rocket here, the idiot one, and we decide we need more boosters. Now something in rocketry that's very important is that your rocket is symmetrical. So if I add a booster just like this, you can imagine this rocket is not going to fly very well. So you might imagine I have to add one on the other side and I do it like this. So it's on the other side, sort of, so this should work. We have to take a look at our staging here and we are going to put all three rockets in the same first stage. So this will go up and then after deploying the parachute, we can gently float down again. So you can have a look, this call this the idiot two and launch it. So we have now three rockets sort of placed symmetrically, one on the left, one on the right. So that should, in theory, work out pretty great. Well, the theory goes out of the window immediately, it doesn't even stand on the pad. No, that was not quite the point of this exercise. What I wanted to show you is that a asymmetrical rocket is basically disastrous. I didn't expect it to be quite this disastrous. So I'm going to add a launch clamp. These are generally used for larger rockets to keep them uh, from standing on their rocket nozzle. So this one will hold the rocket so it doesn't have to stand on the weirdly placed asymmetric rockets. Put it in the first stage as well because otherwise it's not going to release. Save the rocket and go to the launch pad. So now hopefully we are going to see what a what an asymmetrically built rocket is like to fly and let me tell you it's not going to be pretty so we have the rockets and the clamp which uh, the active the action of the clamp is basically just to let go so you always want to put that in the first stage with your engines we're going to do that now and fly off. you can see this rocket will immediately veer away and with the control keys you can somewhat you can somewhat bend it and trying to get it fly it, try to fly it straight but generally an asymmetri asymmetrically built rocket will behave poorly it will steer on its own it will explode it will not stand properly on the launch pad and this is because the center of thrust is then not aligned with the center of mass so that will basically incur thrust steering not something you want in a rocket you want predictable behavior you want perfect symmetry now we're not going to float it all the way back down, we're just going to leave it and go back to the space center. Now getting perfect symmetry is pretty hard, were it not for one important tool. If we were to manually place this rocket here, maybe align these yellow stripes with the top of the rocket, then turn it around exactly 180 degrees, do that again, we will get somewhere close to it being symmetric, but when building big rockets this is not really an option. Now, instead what we're going to do is we're going to use a symmetry tool here in the lower left of the screen and this here, the symmetry mode, we can set it to 4-way symmetry, 6-way symmetry, 8-way symmetry or simple 2-way symmetry. So we're going to go for 2-way symmetry, place one additional booster, place it on the side here and as you can see it will automatically place another one on the other side with perfect symmetry. So these ones are now perfectly symmetrical and additionally we are going to fire the boosters in sequence. So first the outer two when they deplete the center one and then the parachute. And this is the last flight we are going to do for this video, the idiot three. And we will see how high that will go. So 
So here we are launching that with the two rockets. You can see two of them are firing, the center one is not. And we put that in the second stage, well it's actually the first stage, but it counts down so this is going to be the second one that will be activated. Remember stages, you activate them by hitting the space bar. You don't have to wait for the first ones to run out, you can activate it now, but we are going to wait for this one to run out. And then when they run out, we can activate the center stage and make it go up further. You can see because of the symmetry, the rocket is going straight up without any control input and this is what you want to strive for. Predictable, controllable rockets. Now, you're noticing perhaps that these two boosters that have now run out are not doing anything useful for us. They are basically dead weight which we are lugging up higher and higher. You can jettison them, you need to use a part called a decoupler and if there is demand for it I will make more videos explaining the basics of this game. If you would like to see something like that leave a comment, tell me in an email or whichever way you prefer and I will continue making these KSP for idiots videos. See how the basics of rocket design function, why they do, why why they are as they are, and how to use that for your advantage in this game. So with a fairly simple triple solid booster rocket, we are almost in space. We are at about 55 kilometers now, still going up at a pretty decent speed, and we will reach, in fact, an apoapsis of about 100 kilometers, which in this game is about space. Now this is not an orbit yet. F to get it into an orbit you have to do something else entirely otherwise then just shoot straight up but we did reach space. So you too, perhaps an idiot, perhaps just a newbie at KSP can in a few very simple steps get a capsule into space. Just slap on some solid rocket boosters, set up the staging, fire it off and there you go. I'm going to leave you here in space to ponder your next moves and I hope to hear from all of you guys next time. I'm not I'm not sure what I'm saying. I hope to hear from you guys. You don't have to leave any comments. If you do though, I always enjoy that. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Bye.